Now let's talk about how we can connect our own domain name to our cluster and that works with Route 53. Route 53 is a DNS web service. It routes traffic based on multiple criteria that might be endpoint health, geographic location and latency to some destination. It is designed to work very well with other AWS features and offerings and the reason is because it is an AWS ecosystem offering and it basically maps domain names either to your EC2 instances, to S3 buckets, to CloudFront distributions or to ECS clusters and load balancers and any other AWS resources via so-called aliases. For Route 53, you pay 50 cent per hosted zone per month for the first 25 hosted zones. What a hosted zone is is something you will see in the next lecture where we are going to add a hosted zone. Now, the way this works is not with what you would call C names. It is working with alias queries and an alias query is something you attach to your domain. And then you say, um, if it goes to www.yourdomain.com, uh, it actually should go to an elastic load balancer. And then uh, Route 53 will automatically take care of routing this the right way. So how do you do SSL termination? That is where the AWS Certificate Manager comes in, which provisions, manages, and deploys public and private SSL certificates for your domains. Now, with the Certificate Manager, you can request a certificate and deploy it to any uh, ACM, uh, AWS Certificate Manager integrated AWS resources, such as a load balancer, if you use them. The uh, Certificate Manager handles the certificate renewal, so you don't have to do anything. And for public certificates, it is entirely free, which is pretty good considering the price of the rest of the services. Now, in this lab, I want to take a domain, which I already have. If you don't have a domain, then you can get one domain uh, via the Route 53 dashboard and uh, connect it to an ECS load balancer. So we create one and then connect it. In this lecture, I want to go quickly over Route 53 and the AWS Certificate Manager to host our content on a custom domain, on our domain, under HTTPS with so-called SSL termination. So the first thing that we want to do is go into Route 53 and create a so-called hosted zone. So there are two different ways to do this. The number one is you are getting your domain directly on AWS, where you can register a domain, you enter a domain name. Uh, my example, super awesome domain, and then check if it's available. And if it's available, then you can add it to the cart and continue and so on. Now I already have a domain. I have it, uh, I registered the domain via easy name and I'm going to add this domain, which is currently parked on easy name. And I'm probably going to cancel it later on. And I'm going to add it to our AWS route 53 as a custom hosted zone. So I'm going to the hosted zones and I create a hosted zone and my domain name is going to be this domain without any www and so on. So I'm going to create this one and it will automatically tell me I should add the name servers. So I'm going to add these name servers. And I have to go to my other dashboard. If you uh, configure your, or if you get your domain by Route 53, you don't have to do this. But I have to take my own name server and I have to enter those name servers. So let me just enter them one after the other. So this is the first one. So my dashboard here tells me there is an error, but I'm going to ignore this and do the update anyway. And what's going to happen is when the browser or any other service is trying to resolve the domain, it will uh, ask the domain name service, uh, what is your name server? And then when it has the name server, then it's going to connect to Route 53 and it says like, uh, www.ethereumblockchainentwickler.de what is the IP address for this one and then the name server will tell our service what is the IP address for example. 
Now we don't have an IP address yet, but we are going to add one in a second. Let's just wait until our domain name is going to be resolved. So our name servers are updated now to the AWS DNS name servers. And before we are going back to our ECS service, let me show you what happens if we create a record set that we have to enter a name. And then we can either forward it to an IPv4 address, to a CNAME, um, obviously a mail exchange and so on. So the standard ones are always here. But there is also, if you select IP address, there's also an alias. So instead of the IP address of a um, load balancer or a CNAME of a load balancer, usually you go by alias and then you select your targets and Route 53 will take care of forwarding the or updating the record sets accordingly. So we don't have any targets yet. We have to create a target. First of all, let's go into our EC2 uh, dashboard and create a new load balancer. And we are going with our Fargate cluster. So first of all, we are creating an application load balancer. Fargate load balancer. And we are going in all availability zones. We are setting the load balancer into a new security group called, well, load balancer wizard one. We create a new target group, target target group, IP based target group. There is no targets to register at the moment. Close this one. Then we go to the security groups and we are going to select our PHP security group, uh, which actually allows any uh, kind of traffic on any port, which is fine. And then we go back to our Elastic Container Service. And then we are going to stop this service. We are going to lead this because uh, we have to create a new service in order to update, uh, in order to use a load balancer. So it's going to be a PHP service, number of tasks, let's say three tasks. Next, and we are going to deploy it into our VPC. We are going to select the existing security group which we have already. And we are going to select an application load balancer. Our task definition doesn't have any ports. Ah, I used the wrong task definition. So next step. We're going to select a load balancer, application load balancer, add to load balancer, and use this one, and next step, and next step, and create service. So let's just wait until the service is up and running. The first task is running and the others are still pending, but they should be running in a second. Let's have a look at the logs. And they're all running. Let's see the logs here, they're all running. So we can go into the tasks and open, well, the IP addresses for the tasks, but this is not what we want. We want to actually use our load balancer. Go into the load balancer. The load balancer is still provisioning, but sometimes you can already call the load balancer. Not yet. Let's wait until the load balancer is provisioned. The load balancer is active. Let's have a look. And the connection is successful. Great. Let's go back to our route 53 and update our hosted zone for our domain. First of all, we want to create a record set and we want to leave this on a domain without any subdomain. And then we are using an alias. And here we are selecting our Fargate load balancer, our application load balancer. Great, we create this and it should actually work out of the box. And you see here we have a not secure connection via our domain to our load balancer. 
and this works fine. So how can we get this SSL terminated so that it has a secure connection? Well, first of all, we have to go to the ACM, to the uh, AWS Certificate Manager. And here we can provision a certificate and request a certificate. And then for what domain name are we going to request this? So it is going to be for our Ethereum blockchain and de domain. Great. And then we are also protecting another domain, which is Starpoint Ethereum blockchain. So we have a wildcard domain underneath. So next, we are going to use DNS validation. Next, we don't need any text. We review and confirm and request. So it's going to ask us to add a C name record to our DNS entries. And we can do this. It should be the same DNS entry. So we can directly create this record in Route 53. And let's wait a few minutes. It takes up to 30 minutes for this change to propagate through the AWS network, but it usually is much faster. So I'm going to continue here. It is still a pending validation and I'm going to pause the video and come back when the validation is done. And after only three minutes, our domain uh, certificates were already issued. So now we can go back to our load balancer. We are going to add a listener. And in this case, we are going to add an HTTPS listener. And we are going to select our Ethereum blockchain and we get a certificate. You can also leave this at the ELB security policy 2016-08, which has the broadest acceptance rate for the ciphers. Great. As an action, we are going to forward to our target group. And that's it. Let's have a look if this works. Let's go back to our domain. It doesn't work. It has a timeout. What does it mean if it has a timeout? Well, we have to go into our security group for our load balancer, edit the inbound rule and add HTTPS over here from anywhere. Save the rule and reload over here. And our connection is both uh, well, secure and working as well. And this is how you are adding an SSL terminated domain name to your load balancer via Route 53 and the uh, certificate manager from AWS. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next lecture. Welcome back from the lab and I hope you have SSL termination now with an ECS load balancer and Route 53 domains. I hope this lab shed some light on how this is going to be done in our final project. Now, what did we do exactly? First, we added a custom domain to Route 53. And in this case, I added it from an external registrar. And then we had to update, or I had to update my name service from that registrar. Now, normally, if you have your domain directly in Route 53, you don't have to do this. Route 53 will just take care of adding the right domain name servers to the domain. Then we created an application load balancer and created a new service and removed the old one to have it attached to the application load balancer. Then we created an A record alias to the ALB from Route 53. Now that gave us HTTP access to our ALB via our domain, via our custom domain. Then we created a new SSL certificate via the AWS certificate manager and we created both a normal certificate and the wildcard certificate. Then we use this certificate for SSL termination or HTTPS from the load balancer. All right. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next lecture.